Hi, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Welcome to part three of my tour of SpaceX's Starbase factory and launch site with the ultimate tour guide, Elon Musk. Of course, if you haven't watched parts one and two, what are you doing? You absolutely have to watch those first because there's just gobs of information. But this one's a little bit different. We actually go out to the launch pad while it's being constructed and watch Elon at work and still get to ask a couple of fun questions. Just like before, the YouTube play bar is broken up into sections. We have links in the descriptions to those sections too. And of course, we have an article version of some of the notes and key takeaways of this conversation up at everydayastronaut.com. All right, let's hop in the car and head down to the launch pad. Is uh, is the what is the blast? Is the radius actually going to change the exclusion zone a little bit when, when super heavy gets a uh, starts launching when you do the full stack? Um, well, we definitely want to have people. We'll clear the whole area uh, for orbital launches, like like Stargate and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we might have a small crew, um, you know, with some shield, you know, like. Uh, been a robust, uh, you know, some shielding on the roof and, and strong glass. Um, but like, if, if something does go wrong with the uh, with the orbital launch, uh, it will. It's it's really much more of a fireball than it is an explosion. Uh, but it is quite a big fireball. Will you eventually be moving the uh, the launch control and everything, or is that staying at Stargate at the, the control center? It'll, it'll be at Stargate for now. By the way, I haven't, I just got back into town for the first time since the booster's been up, so I have not seen this. Yeah, it's a lot of progress. Team's done great. It's insane. God, it's so tall and that's not even the whole thing. That is the full tower. Or the, but I mean the, the booster. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, the tower is done now, right? As far as height. Yeah. The, the full stack will be a little taller than the tower. God. Are you guys working on a, a second tower too already? Uh, we what? are thinking about it. What's uh, what's the future for Starbase here? Like, will, will you guys always be launching from here? Or what happens when the, the oil rigs go online? I mean, as long as it's... It, you know, we're able to launch here from here um, without too much uh, operational difficulties. Then we'll keep doing it. Um, but it is a bit of a challenge with beach closers. You know, like there's like some people, are, you know, don't want to have the beach closed that much. But on the other hand, we got to be able to launch. So it's like, you know, um, to what degree can we operate from here effectively? Uh, and still let people use the beach and stuff because right. to be determined. So with the oil rigs though, like are those, I guess, how urgent is that to get the oil rigs going? Or is that kind of like, you know, we'll get those going and then, you know, it might be two or three years before you actually start using them for launching. Uh, we're not thinking too much about the oil rigs right now. They're, I mean, they're just, we're dem demoing one rig, um, just you know, because we can just send it to a demo. Like people are really good at demolition and yep. have them do it. Um, so when uh, they, but it's it's not occupying any mine share. How far out will they? If when you do start launching from there, is it going to be like hundreds of miles, or is it like ten or fifteen or something from shore? We're not thinking about it. <laughs> That's, you know, this is all good for me, though, because I'm so nervous that it'll be hard to watch them once they start launching from out there. Yeah. Right now, we're just trying to think about the things that we have to think about. Yep. Wow. So, right in front of us, is that a, is that the QD arm? Uh, this yellow thing here on the sorry on the right now, is that the QD arm or is that the, uh, or is that one of the catchers? That's the QD. Yeah, we're gonna hop out here. Hello. 
Hey, how's it going? Let me, let me, let me give it to you something. Okay. This one. This is for you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. We're going to make it. All right, cool. We're going to make it. Hey, Sam. Hey. All right, Sam. <laughs> Thanks, Zero. Hey. Hell yeah. Uh, cool. How's it going, guys? All right. Actually, Taylor has a plan as of right now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we rolled this thing over today, so it's all in place. Both cranes are in their set location for tomorrow. Okay. Tonight, we are going to re-rig everything. Do you guys mind being on camera or anything? It's just a... Uh, yeah, I can always blur you out. very shy. <laughs> Sam, I know you are. Yeah, it's okay. It's just an iPhone camera. But <laughs> all good, all go good. ahead. Yeah, so tonight we pre rig We're obviously doing that hey, double crane. Hey, can you stop logging on Pre-rig right. at all. Our crane operators get in at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Get everything finally hooked right. up. We do our pre-test. Right, right. Okay. Right, just watch we the launch mount and the big things because right. we don't want things sliding around. Right, and we lift it in 11 hours. 11 hours, okay, cool. Yeah. Great, yeah. awesome. We're on track. Exciting. You see, the, you see that flange that's sticking out from the bottom of the launch mount right there? It's a T. Yeah. So right there, it's a T. You, you want to head up to the top and we'll show you what our game plan is over there? Uh, sure. This is, you, you, were, you were rightfully worried about this, but I think the guys have a pretty good plan. We went over the plan and any contingency planning. Okay. All of last night, six welders got all the shelves done for the for the jacks. So the jacks are up there now. And actually, hey, Buley, do you want to? You wanna go up with us? Sure. Those are the jacks on each leg. All right. The jacks that we got. So on top of that column right there, there's some shim plates. We believe we're off by half an inch. Half an inch. Like Damn. the okay. plane. So what these guys have done, they added plates where we think we're going to be high. And we'll keep the crane on the whole time while we're jacking. And then Robert, you want to talk about the lap plates that you guys have? Sure. Yeah, um, as we're leveling, we might get some gaps here that are bigger than uh, you'd like for your weld gap so if that happens we got some uh, just plates to bridge that gap so we okay. weld there weld up top it's a lot of steel yeah and then over here that little thing I pointed out in the launch now goes into this alignment so we got two places here so we'll be able to go right in here that, that lock okay. oh great rotation. okay got it yeah so this is key this was tracked in sure same thing on that side. So we'll get rotation, and then our plane will be fixed by the six jacks, but we only need two jacks, actually. They're, I think they're 200 ton jacks, so, but we have all six, so we can really dial it in. All right. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, Great. and look, I mean, we moved it, and we had guys right back inside of it going. Um, again, it's all bonus time work in terms of fluids routing, and those are the hoods. So when the QDs retract on the hold downs, the top interface is that hold down hood, or sorry, the QD hood, and so it clamshells back in. It's all through like just a strut, not not a not a dynamic system on its own. The, the hold down hydraulic actuator actuates the hold down, yeah. the QD, and and the hood all all together. Well, as you can see, there's a lot going on here. Yeah, this is that's why I wanted to bring you up here. We've got a handful of guys on pad B right now, suborbital pad B, so that we're ready to take a ship. So we've, we've been on this off of it the whole time, but we've got a few days on that, so we want to we do want to knock some of that out right now, okay. so that we're ready for ship uh, 20 when it comes out here. All right. And then we got a bunch of people on the prop farm, and then tomorrow, at 5 a.m., when the guys get in, they start rigging and lift at nine, this whole area is cleared, so all the guys that were gonna be on the launch mount all go over to the prop farm, so actually some of the guys work tonight is not actual physical work but prep for the army that goes over there tomorrow okay. so that we can be effective with like 70 people got it great well it's definitely a beehive of activity that's yeah, good this is super exciting uh there's a few things to be worked out i after listening to, to what you said about contractor stuff i got with our supervisors here and we're trying to figure out what the what the right number is and and also since we have all these great individuals here right now it's also a good time like oh are there anyone is there anyone from here that wants to join spacex so sure. we're, we're looking into it i i we've incorrectly surged 
for like six months continuously without looking back into it and, and looking at the proper headcount. Okay. Yeah, if somebody's de facto long term, we should make them long term, not temporary. Yeah. Um, it's easier too because these guys come and go and then contract ends, it might be another company. Yeah, They're yeah. It's not set up the right way, so. Uh, no, it's, it's better for them and SpaceX. Yeah. So. Um, but this the yeah. logistic plan right now is wild. So we're also running out a lot of parts. So McGregor is shipping us a bunch of fittings and seals. We got Cape and Vandy ready too to ship us stuff. We'll back order all those other sites on the stuff we take. But we're just trying to keep like we're trying to keep feeding these guys with parts right now. Okay. And that launch ring is complicated. Yeah. I, I, I do, however, like the approach of having the hold downs on the inside like that, where they fold into each other. Like, I like that design. However, everything else needs to, we need to take a look at, just like how thick the steel is to begin with. Um, we obviously learned trying to bolt in and align some of the lugs is not the right path. We learned that line boring, as we got good at it, we, we got really fast at it too. Um, so at least for the next launch mount, we're thinking line boring is, is the, the, the better step. Reduction in mass is gonna be huge for us. Yeah. Yeah, it takes a long time to weld thick steel. Yeah, I mean, this is gonna be a one inch weld, weld here, all yeah. the way around inside and outside. One pass on the inside and outside, just, just one weld pass will get us 40 miles per hour on, on booster and ship. Okay. Great, well, uh, super impressive uh, if, if we can mount this thing in 11 hours, or frankly, even tomorrow, that'll be yeah. great. We, we had to hot wire that crane, and then one of our new roads that we, were, we did collapsed on us, so we had to find a different route this morning. This crane went in place. We did lose a little bit of time having to backfill, but, but that off went pretty well. Yeah. And, and the two, like, second largest crane in the world, third largest crane in the world, we have two operators for, for that pick. So one, one guy from our team, Dave Wright, is going to run the yellow. Giovanni's going to be on the big crane. Okay. So that they can, they're going to load share appropriately and get this thing up. Great. This is brilliant because we would have spent four days reconfiguring this thing. Yep. Like the two things we really need to get good at here is tall stuff and small stuff. Yeah. Bill Riley would say. Yeah. Uh, but it's also, it's also pretty amazing that on a project at this scale, you're still measuring things in days. You're still like. A oh. day, you know, I mean, that's that's impressive when other people it's are like, really minutes and hours. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, mean it's, it's nonstop. It's not like you're doing that because there's a launch in two days. You're doing that the whole time this place has been developed. It's been like down to the, you're counting every minute and second. I told the crane operators, yeah. what would you do if there's an asteroid heading to this planet in eight days? Yeah, exactly. That, that's, what they, they, that's what they were told today. <laughs> yeah. And I who mean, knows, maybe there is. Yeah, I mean, you never know. I think if, if we operate with extreme urgency, then we have a chance uh, of making life multiplanetary. planetary uh, Still just a chance, not for sure. If we don't act with extreme urgency, that chance is probably zero. Uh, and the rate of innovation is not gonna be constant. It's either gonna, either gonna increase the rate of innovation or it's gonna slow down. If you look at uh, you know, American access to, to space with uh, crew, we were able to go to the moon in 69. Then, uh, then with the space, the space shuttle, we could only go to low Earth orbit. And the space shuttle retired. And then for almost a decade, there was no, um, America had no access to space for the people. So this is a pretty bad trend. You know, it's right. trending to zero. Right. Um, we need a very strong trend in the other direction in order to have any chance whatsoever of making life multi-planetary. Yeah. So that's the reason for the extreme sense of urgency. It's legitimate. Yeah, I mean, I'll be long dead before, you know, Mars is self-sustaining, but uh, hopefully the momentum is strong in that direction by the time I die. Hopefully, which probably isn't soon, but no, no. Wow. Well. All right. Yeah, cool. Sam, what if right when I got to the top, I'm like, oh, by the way, I have a horrid fear of heights. Oh, do you? <laughs> no, I don't, but that'd be I'll funny. Go to the tower next time, then. <laughs> that view is amazing. Dude, it's huge.
Oh, it's very impressive. Oh, it's great to see uh, the progress. Yeah, nice work, guys. Yeah. yeah, I've been looking how fast everything can get all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, it'd be amazing if we can mount this thing tomorrow, which is looking like we got a good shot at that. So what is the current plan for B3? Are you thinking about putting more Raptors up under it still and seeing how it does? Uh, sorry, for what? You offer B3, you had talked to once about like maybe putting nine up under there or something. Uh, no, it's, uh, we're, we're just gonna focus on uh, four, we saw four. Um, like I said, it's a rapidly changing situation. So, um, I mean, it, 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 think of it like a guided missile. Like a guided missile is going in the wrong direction at any given point in time, <laughs> but it, it course corrects. Yep. Uh, you don't want to be the, a super precise cannonball when you don't even know where the target is. Yep. Uh, yeah. the, the overarching optimization is what is the uh, fastest time to a city on Mars? Um, and then su a subset you know, uh, fastest time to a fully reusable rocket, subset, fastest time to orbit, basically. Yep. So, yep. so all, all of the initial production is simply uh, a learning exercise. It is not, uh, none of the initial ones will be long-term. So it's really just a question of like, uh, what knowledge can you learn in the shortest period of time? Do you, I mean, I feel like you didn't quite have this freedom with Falcon 9, when you were developing Falcon uh, oops, 9. Actually, the, sorry, vehicles? a car over there? Yep, vehicles just run okay. around. Uh, no, we did not have this flexibility with Falcon 9. So you had, to, you had to be a lot more rigid, and yeah, you had to nail it a lot more when you were developing Falcon 9. Because yeah. you were flying cargo pretty much, day, and getting ready for commercial resupply. Like, you had to pretty much be a lot, like, do well, you think if, if we you could have... Uh, technically, we did uh, have the Grasshopper program. Right. Um, you know, Shannon Diaz sort of ran the Grasshopper program. That we learned a lot. Amazingly, the amazing part is Grasshopper did not blow up. Right. So uh, that's, you know, shocking. Um, <laughs> uh, but we did blow up a... Uh, the F9R? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, ironically, that was, we're not like, I was like, telling the SpaceX board, hey, let's have a board meeting in Texas and you can see the rocket go up and land. That's the one time it blows up. <laughs> well, I did okay. not know that. I did not know that. Um, so, man, it is sweaty awesome. out here. Heck yeah. yeah. Let's keep uh, going. We will <laughs> take more people. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign off at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, any last things you want to say to uh, all the people excited about this program? Yeah, I mean, basically just, um, I, I think it's cool to, that people are getting excited about rockets and kind of finding out, uh, you know, how do rockets work and, um, uh, you know, thinking maybe about life becoming multi-planetary and being a space bearing civilization. Because uh, I think that experience makes the future inspiring. You know, mm -hmm. that's, uh, it, it might be the most inspiring thing. Uh, so. It certainly is the most inspiring thing for a lot of people. Um, and so I hope this gives people uh, confidence about the future and that uh, humanity will have an exciting future in space and we can make science fiction, not always fiction, but some, a reality one day. Thanks. Yeah, I like that. Yep. Thanks, Elon. All right. Thank you again, Elon, for all of the time that you spent, for everything we got to do, and for allowing us to share this with the world. And thanks again to Cosmic Perspective for helping shoot this video and just all the other stuff that they help with. So find them on Patreon and on YouTube. <laughs>
And I owe the biggest thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping make videos like this and everything we do here at Everyday Astronaut possible. Gain access to some exclusive live streams and our awesome Discord community and lots of other fun stuff by heading over to patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. And while you're online, be sure and check out our awesome web store where you can find shirts like this, the Aerospike shirt or our new Mars hats or lots of other fun stuff like our schematics collection and our future Martian Society shirts and just lots of other fun stuff for you or any other space nerd. Head on over to everydayastronaut.com slash shop. Thanks everybody, that's gonna do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people.